All right, so we have a quick quick tutorial here on how to set the Algae ASC2 start clock. What well, gets used a lot for cross-country ski racing here at the Craftsbury. Uh, some important features, the green button up here, the black button up here. This um, selects, uh, and this, ex this selects, this accepts. Um, the same thing can be accomplished here with the plunger, the start input. And then there's a second plunger setting for uh, setting the setting the um, interval. All right, so this thing is uh, has a lot of pluses, but one of them is not necessarily ease of setup. So I say it's not that it's that hard; it's just that you have to kind of be ready to do bang, bang, bang. So you turn it on, and it's uh, you have to set the clock, set the time of day. You need to choose the program for countdown. And then you need to choose the actual countdown interval. And if you miss, especially those second steps, it can be a royal pain in the butt because you have to start all the way over. So, with that in mind, uh, it is helpful to have the plunger, though you don't, strictly speaking, need it. I, um, so we turn it on. First thing it asks is whether store or not. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I usually just skip it. So black, again, advances across the digits. Uh, like selects the column and green runs up the um, green runs up the number. So let's see here. Put this to 27. And after three seconds of sitting on one spot, it'll be prepared to sync. So you just wait till 27 comes around. Okay, so now it's counting. We're going to be ready here. The green advances our program number. You need to consult the literature as to which program number you want. I want number five. And then to change the interval, you can either do it with the plunger, or you just press and hold. can individual presses advance through it and then press and hold to accept. It'll go through a full minute countdown before it starts um, doing the interval you select. Usually after I've set the clock I take the plunger out and put it to the side. This particular model also has a speaker as you heard. There is an external speaker as well. There's also a 12 volt DC input if you want to go with that. It has AC power and can be charged, or there is also an internal battery. Um, what your comfort level is with that is up to you. So anyway, I uh, hope this is helpful, and hope you'll come help us time some races. All right, ski race timing, part two, the photo beam. So you have a reflector, at least the one at the center. We have a reflector. We have a beam over here. We have the algae. Uh, I don't know the model number off the top of my head. Um, it's a pretty basic system, frankly. So you want to make sure that the beam bounces off the reflector. And they give you a handy, uh, handy little gauge here to indicate. You can see there's a needle. But then when you have it lined up, it goes to the green. And if you don't have it lined up, it stays over here in the in the uh, silver and whatnot. Then these are where you plug your clips into your timer. In our case, the Summit SRT1000. And um, there's just sort of this ball joint here that's openable, open and closable by this little clamp. And then you get the stadium guys to put a two by two in the ground. And you just have these thumb screws. It's actually in some ways easier to aim this thing in when it's not this close. Like you can see we have all of about two feet here. Um, it's actually easier to aim it across a, a broader distance, strangely enough. Um, there's also a hood. Sorry, hood here, like this. That helps if there's blowing snow to get avoid false positives. Um, and then your battery is right there, just a single C cell. And 
where is my 